That's interesting. You use that word dignity because the last four years, again, I don't, I'd hate anything I said to sound patronising about America. I don't, I don't want it to sound that way at all. It's a Western problem. We have it here in Australia. But these elites, these technocrats, have not learnt the lesson of a little humility and the need to recognise that people out there may not have college educations or whatever, but they can think and they can understand. So what they're picking up is that they're not respected. Their dignity is not respected. They're seen as people who couldn't know their own best interests. And this seems to me to be a massive problem. It's surely part of what gave rise to the whole Trump disruption, this patronage, this um, uh, condescension, this you couldn't possibly know what's best for you attitude. I think, um, as I see it, that was never going to change unless people were staring defeat in the face. And that's what this election has shown, is that Americans are are going to stand up, or enough of them are going to stand up, to force something of a reset. I think so. And though you almost word for word articulated the canned speech, to tell you the truth, of Donald Trump. He said, you people lost out in China and somebody else benefited. And these are the people who outsourced and offshored and profiteered, and that's not going to happen anymore. And because you're valuable people and you've got a lot of things going for you. you got the cheapest energy in the world. you got a good infrastructure. You don't have any transportation costs for the Amer- and you're skilled. And we're going to do the same things uh, here that they said we couldn't do and had to go to China. But it, I think it opens a larger question uh, to your point about this condescension and this elitism. And throughout classical and Western culture, there was this tradition of what the Greeks called uh, tokusion, meson, the golden mean, mind and body, that you had to be a thinker, but you had to be muscular. You had to use your muscles and your brain. And you had to check your theory and your abstraction by concrete reality. And to tell you the truth, the embodiment in classical literature in Hesiod or Virgil was the farmer because he was using all of his mind as the independent yeoman He had to know the markets. He had to know how to graft. He had to know uh, profit and loss, but he had to do the physical labor. And so in that matrix, what we've created is a drone class. We've created a bunch of millions of highly sophisticated people. They don't know anything about which way the wind blows or what season we're in or any where their food comes from or why you can't stop fracking or whether granite counter comes under a mountain, the granite. They have no idea what a stainless steel is for their refrigerators. They love hardwood floors, but they don't want to cut down a tree. And they're very, they're almost uh, infantile, prolonged as adolescence. And during this lockdown, we had a hundred million people that grew food, they transported it, they created fuel, they, they served us, they waited on us, so you could stay where I am and here, and I could order something on Amazon, and somebody out there put a mask on, and they drove the truck to deliver it, or they sorted it at a plant, or they made it at a plant, or they grew it in their farm, or they mined it onto the ground, and we said to them, you have to have your mask on 24. Oh, I saw a picture of you in the, and you were driving your truck and your mask was off. Or you know what? We looked at you and you came in and delivered my washing machine. You didn't use hand sanitizers. And so that class of nervous Nellies, they're almost anal retentive. They run the country, so to speak, but nobody has any respect for them. And they're entirely dependent on the muscular classes. They told us that we had to have our computer, their computers and their finance and their investment and their entertainment. And the lockdown showed us that, you know what? We can get by for a while without the NBA. We don't really need to go on to uh, social media, but you have to eat and you have to have somebody give you gas. And you have when your thermostat goes out and you're in your New York apartment, some guy you deprecate has got to go up there and take it apart and fix it. And so that, that's what, what a lot, Trump, the last three weeks of the campaign, quite brilliantly, 
That was the theme of his campaign. I took risks just like you did. I know that everybody makes fun that I got COVID, but I'm not going to sit in a basement. I'm going to go out and see you. You're going to see me. Some of us are going to get COVID. Some of us are going to get sick. Those that have comorbidities may die. And you know what? I was really ill. I took an experimental drug. They said, don't take another one. You can't mix it two. We don't know the consequences. Then they said, if you take a steroid and the Regeneron and the antiviral, who knows? And I took them all. Why? Because I'm your president. And that turned out to be in a very effective uh, Churchillian message, you know, and people said, you know, it's like Churchill saying, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, you can't get in to a Halifax bomber and fly over North Africa when you have a slight case of pneumonia. And he said, I'm Prime Minister of Her Majesty's government. I'll do damn well that I please. I can be replaced, but the idea of an active Prime Minister can never be replaced. And so that was a very good that was a reminder that this coastal elite, uh, why they're so influential, it's funny, most people are not fond of them. And we see them on the streets with the Antifa rallies. They spit in the police face, they scream and yell, they burn. And then when they're arrested, they go into a fetal position with sort of this nasal voice, please stop, you don't know who I am. I have a resume, I can't go to jail. I just can't get it on my record. And then when you start reading the list of the arrested, it's a, it hits a perfect pattern. Mr. Joe Smith, Mr. Jane, Mrs. Jane Doe, BA, uh, master's degree, two years of college, and then they have massive student debt. They majored in environmental studies or race studies or sociology. And you get the you get the image that there's a lot of disaffected people with $1.6 trillion in debt that are highly educated, pretty ignorant about the world, but they feel the world did not appreciate their genius. They didn't get hired at Google at the highest level. So history's most dangerous people are people who feel they're educated in the system, whether they're, they come suicide bombers or Jacobins or Bolsheviks, the system didn't appreciate their training and their intellectual prowess and didn't remunerate them accordingly and they want to burn it down. And so we're run by those people, but we're also endangered by them because when they think they don't get their just desserts, they go out and try to destroy the system in revenge. Thank you for watching this episode. We appreciate your support. If you value vital conversations like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel there and also click the notification bell to stay up to date with new releases.